so now chapter 6 time of supply okay GST deals with two things one is goods and other is services now you already know what is called a supply but in supply there are many things first is agreement to supply isn't it then there is supply there is invoice there is payment this is not the sequence but these are the events right suppose some online payment for the hotel booking I have made the payment but the place is not there right so that there can also be a situation where payment is made but the agreement is not there right so this is not a sequence but these many events are common that there will be an agreement for supply of goods and services then there is an actual supply then there is invoicing then there is a payment right now at which point of time the tax liability accrues everything can be on a different date right and on every event there can be different rate of tax if there is a wide gap right assume that agreement is made on 5th July 17 right but the actual supply takes place on 5 11 17 right invoice is done on 5 11 17 but payment is going to be on 10th June 18 all possible mm. I have randomly taken the dates just to show that every event is taking place at a different time and every time rate of duty rate of tax is different right so now two questions when the liability to pay GST accrues and number two at what rate it should be payable right so this chapter is going to tell you when the liability accrues and at what rate you are supposed to pay tax right now the problem will arise if there is a variation of rates between the events when goods are supplied rate of duty is some amount when invoice is raised that is another rate when payment is received that is another rate right so there is also an issue that what will be the actual rate if there is a change in the rate rate of tax right so what we are, we are going to learn in this chapter when the tax liability accrues and at what rate tax will be payable right now in this chapter we are going to cover up CGST Act few provisions section 12 section 13 section 14 right this talks about time of supply for 
this is also time of supply for while law is drafted all the efforts are made so that things are arranged alphabetically I intentionally left it blank so you remember that what will come first it will be goods then services this talks about what will be the impact of change of rate in this chapter we will also cover up section 31 this relates to invoice so that is also one important event right and we will also refer rule number 47 this is connected to section 31 this is the coverage of this chapter if you take print out of these these are five pages only and if you see this chapter this is running into 60 pages so what you should be doing N note summarization take the print of this these many provisions focus on those illustrations are here duplications here that's why lots of number of pages right now you already understand what is the meaning of goods you understand what is the meaning of service you understand what is called consideration right you understand what is the what is the rate of tax right lots of things are already known to you but this, this chapter is given as if it is being given to a layman as an independent chapter so all relevant definitions are incorporated provisions are given then analysis is given then examples are given right so they try to make it most comprehensive so don't have to do anything else other than this now if you see come on the page number one of the chapter what it says number one it says the section numbers referred in in the chapter pertain to cgst act that we have already mentioned and after reading this chapter you will be able to so what is expected from you after you have studied the chapter identify the point in time when the liability to pay gst arises on supply of goods or services where gst is payable under forward charges as well as under rcm on supply of vouchers exchangeable, on supply of goods and services in residual cases in case of enhancement of the value of supply. Then pinpoint the application rate of GST in case where there is a change in the rate of tax and apply the concepts relating to time of supply of goods and or services in the problem solving. What do they want to understand? What is the time of supply of goods? What is the time of supply for services? Right? in normal situation in RCM so in section 12 we will talk both in section 13 also we will talk both forward and RCM right then in both the sections invoice is an important point so that's why comes section 31 when the invoice shall be issued right and if it is not issued within the time it is deemed to have been issued that will be section 31 right there again two things forward and reverse correct then rule number 47 so this is expected from you in this chapter and if you know this much thoroughly this chapter is done for you so now come to page number three on page number two introduction is given so in the introduction they have given the background why this chapter is relevant so that i have already explained you why it is relevant right now these relevant definitions majority of them you have already studied but let us go through one by one 
and what we have already studied those we are not going to discuss again the first definition given is associated enterprise not defined here but defined under the income tax act and i presume that you know income tax better than me document may be physical may be digital because digital has been accepted in all the laws now right so let's say that includes underline the word includes is not saying it is it means written or printed record of any sort and electronic record as defined in clause t of section 2 of the it act just a reference for you what is the meaning of goods goods means all movables including actionable claims but excluding money and securities right further includes grass growing crops which are required to be separated or severed under the contract of sale next word is prescribed we are not supposed to then recipient recipient definition we have already done before whether there is a consideration or no consideration if consideration person liable to pay otherwise to whom these are actually supplied services everything other than goods money and securities except where consideration is charged in relation to service in relation to securities as well as money who supplier on whose behalf goods are supplied that includes as agent also what is reverse charge when the supplier is held liable to pay tax right and the government is having a right to prescribe where rcm is applicable that we have already studied where rcm is there right so wherever the receiver is liable to pay tax that will be referred as reverse now means the liability to pay tax by the recipient of the supply of goods or services of both instead of the supplier of such goods or services of both what is the voucher means an instrument where there is an obligation to accept it as consideration or part consideration for supply of foods or services or both and where the goods or services or, or both are to be supplied or or the identities of their potential supplier are are they either indicated on the instrument itself or as a related document including the terms and conditions of the use of such instrument so this voucher is not the voucher of your audit this is not accounting voucher they will not they will not but we never know up to what level they can go yes. they should not be asking right now voucher is one word which is used commonly for accounting purpose yeah. but here it is different right like a commonly used is sodexo pass yes. right mm. lots of employers are giving to employees mm. what for as a part of the remuneration right now that pass can be exchanged at number of establishments either for goods or for services mm. so we are referring to that here right okay. now read it again this is an instrument right now instrument is something in writing by which rights and obligations are created that is called instrument right there is an obligation to accept it as a consideration or part consideration for supply of goods or services 
right so when the person is given that instrument he has got the right what is the right he can act, he can receive goods and services in exchange of that and the person for whom that is given he is under obligation to accept that as a consideration or part consideration for supply of goods or services right it may be only a fixed person or it may be open thing right like amazon you can buy gift vouchers give it to anyone right so when it is given to somebody the person who is receiving the gift voucher he has got the right and amazon has is under obligation we are talk about that voucher 